Uh, we're missing one junior. And I don't have a loose list. And then what's my total here? So we have 30 juniors, one senior, one junior is absent. So 29. Sorry. We have 31 enrolled, 30 are in the room. Okay. And 29 of them are juniors, and one is a senior. <laughs> Let me try this again. Uh, I'll, I'll be clear this time. <laughs> or I'll try to listen. Of our seniors, we have one enrolled in this present. Oh, okay. Of our 31 juniors total, <laughs> one is that? <laughs> Got it. on the papers I've given you so far. Okay. So I want to talk to you about how to do all your homework and classwork and note taking and book life and welcome to the class and everybody belongs. Uh, please take out the study guide for unit one and the reading packet for unit one. You got them last Thursday. They look like this. I told you we would use them today. understand something that I don't, in previous years I didn't explain this to my students until the end, and they were always like, why didn't you tell us at the beginning? So I'm telling you at the beginning. Um, I'm, I'm an immigrant, this is my second language, school was really difficult for me, um, language barrier first, then a cultural barrier that lasted much longer, and then social awkwardness, and like I never felt good about my peers and um, I moved a lot so like pretty much always hated school and then I got to college and uh, I loved it. In four years I got a triple major, I was in the honors program, I did research, I worked on two separate graduate research projects and then I launched my own undergraduate research project that was published, it was funded by the National Science Foundation. Um, after college, I had a couple of years of like private sector, and then I went back to become a teacher. I um, I got my teaching credential, my bilingual teaching, blah blah blah. I forget what that's called, and um, a master's in education. And my master's thesis was on how we learn things and um, how assessment um, takes them out of our brain. So how we put stuff into our brain and how how we recall it for the purpose of assessment. It was called learning and testing in the high school setting or something like that. And so for my masters, I had to do all this research on like how your brain works and what are good habits and what are bad habits. And I realized like, oh, by a funny coincidence, because I am a language learner and because um, I was so busy in college, I sort of built a method for studying, which I found out later, like during my master's, is coincidentally probably the, the best way for almost all humans to take in information for the purpose of uh, knowing it for a long term and being able to recall it well. So I got all this 
all this uh, research I did about the brain and about learning and about assessment sort of explained to me why it was that it worked for me to do what I did all along when I was in college. And um, college was good for me. It kind of made me feel smart. And then I realized later I, I'm probably not all that smart. I just kind of stumbled upon the best way to learn. And so when you get to high school, every teacher will tell you, like, oh, you should take your notes like this, and you should take your notes like that, and you should use this, and you should use, like, colored pen, and you should use the Cornell method, or the question and answer method, or the skip a line method, or the one-sided, double-sided method. And, of course, by the time you've given them the benefit of the doubt at best, you just get tired of all these stupid ideas and can't remember how you're supposed to take notes, and most of you just quit taking notes. Um, I won't tell you how to take notes. That's your business. I will... First of all, I uh, recommend very highly that you do take notes. But second of all, I want to show you my system for teaching, which relies on your system for learning. And I hope that you'll trust me. This is actually, um, I'm not making this stuff up. This, this is supposed to be helpful. Um, this is the study guide. It tells you what you'll need to learn from the book. So this is made to complement the book, the reading packet, and the movies that we see in class. If you could please look at the top, it says the name of the unit and the chapters. It's important that you notice the chapters up here. Second of all, in bold between the two lines, it says the main emphasis of the unit. And then, please look up, there's this block of underlined words, and if you flip through, you'll see some more underlined words. Underlined words are vocabulary that you'll need to know. Now, please look at the vocabulary on the first page. I need you all to read along because I'm going to be pointing out specific things that will come up later. On the first page of the vocabulary, it says, define and correctly use the following words. Tragedy of the commons. Not in book, but make sure you understand this critical concept. Then. See how in capitals it says sustainability, blah, 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 like four sentences down, it says moral justifications. And then it skips down, and then in capitals it says probability. But you know if you see that probability that's capitalized. So on the first page, at the top, in the block of underline, probability is capitalized. If you skip down a couple of pages, a couple of lines, excuse me, a couple of lines below probability, it says system, and that's capitalized. Those are the breaks in the vocabulary. So sustainability starts the chapter one vocab, probability is the chapter two vocab, and system is the chapter three vocab. You do not, yes? Is Tragedy of the Commons part of chapter one? No, like it says there, it's not in the book. Oh. Now, remember, these are the words that I want you to learn out of your book. There's a lot of other vocab in your book that you don't need. So do not define all the vocab in your book, just these. Then you'll notice it says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Those are called study goals. They are my questions that you answer in writing. So I'm telling you which notes to take, and your answer is your notes. Please go to the last page of my study guide. And read from the top sentence completing until you reach that line across the paper. It's about two thirds, like this much. And when you finish, what do you do with the paper? That's right, show me you read it. Thank you, go ahead.
Okay. Um, the way this works is I tell you what to take out of your book and put into notes. So I know you have the book. You look through, peer, through chapter one, and it'll say, like, define carrying capacity, and there'll be a question about carrying capacity. And then, you know, if it doesn't really come up in there, you can just sort of, like, skim that. So as you read the chapter, this is the parts you put into your notes. I'm guiding what to write into your notes. So to format it, Last name first, period, assignment number, unit dot, assignment number. If you look at the bottom of that last page, it says 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1.4. See those four? Those are the four assignments, the chunk of vocab and study goals. Those numbered study goals are my numbers on the paper you're touching now. They are not numbered questions in your book. You will not answer the numbered questions in your book. So assignment 1.2 is which study goals? What? 9 through 15. 9 through 15. You can see right there. I wrote it. You're, you already have all your homework assignments. Those four separate homework assignments are due on four separate days. That's posted on the internet as well. So that's what you title it. And then, please look up, you put the word in the definition, word and definition. Do not copy definitions. I know that's faster. When you get kind of lazy, you just want to flip to the back and copy them out of the glossary. I should warn you that that does not help you learn. As a matter of fact, there's some evidence that might make you learn it less well. If I tell you what the meaning of a word is, and you write down like something that helps you remember, like the time my sister threw a watermelon at my mom, those notes will probably help you learn better than if you had just copied for word for word what the actual definition is. Uh, memorization is not learning, it usually doesn't stick very long, and usually doesn't help you build knowledge either. Uh, memorizing is unfortunately not um, very useful to you, so do not try to memorize the definitions as they're written in the book. That doesn't usually construct meaning, it's not helpful. I don't usually have the word-for-word -word definition in my test, so memorizing it would not normally help you anyway. So write it in your own words. Here's how my student Rachel did that. In assignment 1.1, you can see the words, and then she wrote her own meaning. Do not bother copying stuff. And then, for study goal number 9, please look at study goal number 9. It says, the case of Mona Lake illustrates science values needed, environmental decisions, what were issues, what were values. So you would write number nine, Mona Lake issues and values, and just sort of make your own notes. The way that the class works is you'll have almost everything written down in your notes when you walk in. Look, I just put a little stamp on them. Then you keep this because they're your notes. So during the day, I will say, anybody have any questions about study goal number nine? I'd like to tell you something about number 10. Hey, everybody, number 11 has a really big issue. Let's look at a slideshow. And as class is moving, you will make little amendments to your notes. So my student, Rachel, you can see that these were written in different handwriting because she left number two blank and filled that one in the class. You can see that um, in number six and then 
uh, in some of the vocab, she made some notes in pen. Here I can see that she did some erasing and she changed a couple of words. Here she crammed in like a couple of sentences after the fact. So that's the idea. You come to class with all the notes you got out of the book based on my instructions to take notes. And uh, you can take those notes however you want. There's a million ways to take notes. I don't actually have a big stake in that. And then you'll add in, like, look, she made a little diagram. So that, I know that that helped. I remember that diagram. And then you'll turn these in after you have studied them. So once you've taken the notes, they're for you to use. This is your active document. You'll do this many notes for unit number one. And then on the day of the exam, you throw them in a box because you don't need the notes anymore because you're taking the test. Does that make sense, everybody? I really want to highlight that these are your notes for you. You do your notes however they help you. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to write your notes in German, French, Italian, Spanish, I don't care, they're your notes. If you want to draw diagrams or whatever, that's all good. They must be handwritten as you read, no typing. But your notes are your business, you can write yourself whatever reminders, drawings, it all helps. And coincidentally, that's all based on brain science. You, you remember things you wrote yourself better than things somebody else wrote. You remember handwriting better than type. Uh, you will better construct meaning by using your own language than copying language from someone else. Uh, your little doodles work as mental anchors that help you find that knowledge later. So actually, feel free to scribble all over your notes. It's actually good for you. There's some suggestion that people who scribble more remember better. Now look, because you're taking your notes for you, I don't really read them that much. When you come in, I'll just kind of look and be like, yeah, that looks like the right thing, and I just stamp it. If it looks done, you got to stamp. So then when you turn it in on the day of the exam, it's like, oh, stamp, that was done on time. But I'm not going to get too finicky, like, if your notes are in French, what do I know? I don't really speak that much French. So. so here's a kid who got a stamp and like he probably felt really good about this because he's like, yes. Check this out. He doesn't read the homework. Number 10. Once again, I didn't do the apes homework. I can't read that part. I didn't do it. Makes no sense. Can't read that part. I didn't do the work because I was lazy. Number 11, makes no sense. Oh, wow, I didn't know homework again. Number 12, as we look at number 12, I see the desk at Sandridge's class, and I'm missing the lecture once again. Number 13, once more, I forgot to actually read a book and had to spark note it all the way through. Number 14, Losing My Religion by R.E.M. was actually a good song, almost like Nirvana. Grunge music from the 1990s is good in small doses wonderfully. It goes on, number 15. Did you laminate it? Yes. <laughs> because then I noticed, as I was like walking through and stamping, I was like, wait, that is Nirvana? And I looked at the paper and I was like, bro, uh, I want to keep this. You can check it out. It lives on my pegboard. I'll put it back up by tomorrow. Um, there's a couple reasons why I show you this. First of all, um, just to prove that you can definitely cheat on the homework if you want to. All of you know that. Second of all, if I catch it, of course, I, I will not give you credit for it, but I'm not that likely to catch it. Because I'm not really that worried about it. So I don't really check, because this doesn't really help you, and the tests are half your grade, and if you don't have good notes, you don't usually do well on the test, and so I don't, I don't care. Like, he cheated me on one homework point, and then I won in the end, because he didn't do well on the exam. Like, we can do that dance anytime you want. I don't care. Uh, just so we're clear, this is not the, like, the, the homework point is kind of irrelevant. 
But this method of like instruction that I recommend, I mean, I, I really have to tell you it was my secret to success in university. I now see all the brain science, why it helped me so much. All the people I know that do well in academia, this is how you do it. Like you, you look through the book and take down as much writing as you can and ask an expert to help you with the details. That's the way my class will work every day. Check it out. My notes are just expanded versions of your notes. So I have answered every question that you answer. And then I write down stuff, like show them the slideshow about this thing, or make a correction on number 13, or um, give the example, or persistent misunderstanding, warn the students about this thing. There's no way that I could go over all this content in class. We don't have nearly enough time. So you do about 90%, the whole foundation on your own. And I just do the little nitty gritty tough parts. I know a lot of you don't want to do this, fine. I know a lot of you are busy or lazy or different, fine. Um, I'm not here to like coerce you or judge you or abuse you, but you should, trust me, like if you, if you do this thing, you will crush this class. Because here's the last thing I wanted to tell you. In addition to being my lecture notes, this is also the answer to every test in um, every one of my units. You, you have all the questions that I will reformat to make my exams. If there's ever a question on an exam that wasn't in your study guide, you tell me and I throw out the question. So I'll ask you on the day after the exam, it's like, hey, did anybody have a problem with any of the questions? And he's like, oh, number 14 wasn't anywhere. And if I can't show you where number 14 was in the body of my study guide, then we throw out question 14 for everybody. Like, this is exactly what's going to be on the test, all that stuff. If your book is good enough, I'll just tell you, like, you know, your book answered study goal number nine just fine and then you're ready with your notes for the test. And if not, I'll be like, hey, on number 10, your book kind of blew it, so let me top that off, and then those notes might be the answer on the test. If your notes are as good as my notes, you already wrote 100% on the exam. Yes? Is the test multiple choice or is it short answer? 25 multiple choice, one short answer. They're all timed at the same pace as the AP testing day. So you get 22 and a half minutes for 25 multiple choice questions, and you get 22 and a half minutes for one three to five part response. Uh, Ruggieri, is that like a fair formatting promise about the test and the, yeah. pretty much everything? Most people finish the test halfway through the time. So it's pretty good. Yes? Can you, like the HP tests for the essays, are yes. there like specific like formats, like there were for world history? Yes, and we'll go over all that here. And I grade it the same way. So I'll warn you in advance. Must be full sentences, no outline form. Mm -hmm. Don't restate the question. Get right. to the point. Do supporting evidence. Do all the action words. And that's how I'll be grading you. And then that's also how they'll be grading you. So by the time you get to the test in May, you've had like 10 practice exams. Right. What else? Yes? It says here, eligible work received no credit. Right. But it says you could write it in a foreign language. So are you yeah. judging our handwriting? If I wanted to use Google Translate, then yes, I'd still be able to read it. So yeah, it's not so much that I'm judging your handwriting, but you should know that on the AP test as well, if your writing is not legible, they don't give you credit. And so it's just sort of like a warning that if you write chicken scratch, you have to fix that. Do you write chicken scratch? Uh, I'm doing notes. Just I can write it in a way where only I can read it. Hmm. You know, I guess if I could challenge you to read it, I might accept it. I'm not, dude. I'm not a type. Like this is all me trying to help you. So like seriously, if you.
you insist that it's legible to you, then fine, whatever. What else? I mean, I, I actually don't know like real Arabic from fake Arabic, so if you were just like writing <laughs> labels, like what am I going to say, right? <coughs> Um, finally, please look at questions 25 through 29 in your study guide. Now please look at your reading packet. packets like this one that are a bunch of articles students have submitted to me over the years. They'll usually be numbered, so each of the numbered study goals corresponds to one of the readings. So where it says number 25, that's, you know, for question number 25. And then that article that says 26, that's for question 26. And then this one is for question 27. And this one is for question 28. And this one is for question 29. This is the shortest reading packet. Usually the reading packets are like triple this length. And some of them are like really burly, like 30 or 40 pages. So I have to warn you that the reading packets are often more reading than your textbook. And the reading guide assignments are usually the nitty gritty. They're the sort of details that are likely to show up on the AP test. I, I got to warn you that the AP test has a bunch of trivia. So usually the reading packets might seem kind of random and I'm just trying to stuff as much trivia into you as your brain can possibly hold. Does anyone have any questions for me about how I do my class? Yes? Well, the first assignment, 1.1, is due this Friday, I think. Whatever says on the board. Is that what it says on the board? Yeah, yeah, it's Friday. Yeah, Friday. So your first lump of vocab and questions 1 through 8 have to be answered like that in your own handwriting. Make sure you include some prompt from the question in your notes so you'll know what you were talking about. If the question says, what color is the flag on the sail ship? And your answer is yellow, you want to have a prompt that says flag on sail ship is yellow. Because if not, you're just going to be looking through your notes in three months and it's going to say yellow. Like, what the hell am I going to do with that? Yeah. But it has, in a in question like number 10, um, when it says like science and it's underlined, do you want us to like say the science and the definition? Like, if you need it, yes. So like every, every under word, underlined word, we do the definition. Correct? Right. Usually if they're in context like that, mm -hmm. the question will somewhere ask you for a definition. Um, there's words that you already know, so if you know it, just write down what your mental definition of it is. Anybody else? 